Man, you guys around. OG Silver back here. <coughs> hey, guys, today there's no victory and glory, but I will tell you this. I got a breather from being uh, a full-time caregiver. They're working on uh, the garage door here because um, the first accident my stepdad had, he's a diabetic, and, he, and he's got dementia. He forgets to take his medication. And for those of you who have elderly people in your family, man, do yourself a favor, do them a favor, do society a favor. Um, some kind of way you have to become their power of attorney and go to their doctor and get a letter written where they cannot drive because here's what happened. It was uh, it was de declining senses. The first thing that happened to my stepdad, he for starts forgetting to eat. And then if you're a diabetic, you know, it does things. So then he, his blood sugar is low. He passes out, dude. And he runs into the garage door, dude. He passes out, runs to the garage door, dents it. So now it doesn't open or close, which is bad because now the raccoons can come in, the possums, the squirrels, of course, rats and mice, dogs and kitty cats. But most importantly, criminals can sneak up under there too. So for the longest time, the garage door um, didn't work. But the fact that it was wintertime, it was a deterrent to the criminals. Because, But now this is going to, now this is a, uh, I'm sorry, guys. I think this is, uh, is this May or April? I'm sorry, man. I've lost track. I haven't slept. The April becoming May. So, and uh, back east, April showers bring May flowers. So it's been um, raining. May's going to come. So anyway, I had to get the garage door fixed because now it's going to be criminal season. The criminal's going to be out and about looking for ways to get into your place. So I got that fixed. So now that they're fixing the garage door, the visiting nurse is here for today. So she's doing all the medications and stuff and she's got an assistant with her. So I got a breather, I wanted to shoot this video. So um, <clears throat> I'm now in the guest room, guys. I'll be shooting videos from here on out until uh, whatever happens, I'm trying to be positive. But uh, without further ado, let's get to talk of today's video, which is in maximum security prison, never walk the yard alone. Our bandit's bones will be deep up in your cheeks. This is an important video, man, because, you know, you guys come on here, and I'm always stressing that I believe that if you're a soft mofo, man, and you ain't been out here training and getting your, you know, getting your workouts in and your fighting skills, there's a lot. If you just Google on YouTube how to be the best version of yourself, they all tell you four things, and I'm going to break it down for you. Number one, they tell you to get a gym membership. To work out and be healthy, right? This is what they tell you. But health is not self-defense. Health is just how you feel about yourself. Let's call it your inner game. So then you're working out, man. You're feeling healthy. Number two, you want to start doing some mixed martial arts cage fighting. Now, there was a debate on the channel, and I'm open to debates, guys. As you see, I don't really delete the uh, messages unless you're talking about some crazy, crazy stories bullshit, which I'm not going to revisit because he turned my life upside down and the bloods that associate with his police cooperated ass. I'm not going to revisit that. But any comments associating the crazy stories, I'm not going back in the past. I'm moving forward. I delete those. But anything else, even when you youngsters be putting your stupid ass comments on there, I leave them because, man, everybody should see how dumb your ass is. But here's what I'm trying to say. Number two. It's fighting skills. So there was a dude that I respect. He came on the channel in the comments and he was like, no, gee, the best two fighting skills you can have is boxing and wrestling. And I really, really, really thought about it. If you can only afford to do two, I would say boxing and wrestling. The reason by it, why boxing teaches you to bob and weave, you know, and evade and, and, and all this kind of stuff, man, hand-eye coordination. And the most important is the footwork. If you got footwork, you're really, really good. And then you got wrestling background, you know, you can pretty much take on anybody. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. If I had to choose my two, and I'm going to be completely transparent and honest with you, based on all the martial arts I've taken, the ass kickings I've taken, broken jaws, broken occipital, broken nose, messed up, knocked out teeth, broken arms and legs, dude. I would say for me, if I had to only choose two, it would be Muay Thai dude and wrestling. That would be my two. And I feel like I can go up against anybody. Muay Thai, why? Because it's the art of nine limbs. 
Boxing is just two limbs, your arms, your left, your right hand, your left hand. Kickboxing is four, your, your, your hands and your feet. Muay Thai is nine, hands two, feet two, uh, elbows two, knees two, and then your head. Just so you guys know, street Muay Thai is, they used to do a lot of headbutts. I'm saying this because if you guys have not been putting in your work, dude, you youngsters is into a life of crime, you sagging and banging and all this stuff, you don't realize it's not a matter of if, but when. Because when you live in this gang banging lifestyle, drug dealing lifestyle, criminal lifestyle, you a thug ass ninja, it's all good, baby. Vato, it's all good. Do your thing because see, young dudes think they're invincible. They think they're smarter than the last generation. They're never going to get caught. I'm here to tell you it's not a matter of if, but when. And it's just like, man, if you're in a life of crime, you should have a lawyer on retainer, dude. You should have some money hidden away in a safety deposit box. You should have some assets in your mom's name or somebody that you trust. And you should be doing your martial arts fighting skills because it's a matter of time. You're going to get locked up. And there's some fools that don't even know you. No matter how, how many, many homes you got, they're going to test you, dude. They're going to test your, your gumption. So this is all I'm saying. So that goes into the topic of today's video. In maximum security prison, never walk the yard alone or bandit's bones will be deep up in your cheeks. So this is what I'm trying to tell you, youngsters, man. I don't believe you should ride with your people, man. Because your people are the first ones to try to violate you. Watch the movie called, uh, I think it's called Lock Up or Lockdown. Somebody told me the name of the movie about the brother. He was a square dude. He was a swimmer. And then he was an artist and he got into it with Fat Joe. And he accidentally, he accidentally threw Fat Joe down, uh, down where the subway is. And Fat Joe got electrocuted or hit by a subway train. Now he got life in prison. And uh, it was, man, that movie made me cry because he was just a square dude. And this is what I try to tell you, you square dudes that come on here that you happen to get caught up in my algorithm. A square dude, your life can change, dude, in a moment's notice. Just like the movie American History X. Just like the movie uh, Law Abiding Citizen, dude. There's a plethora, just like the movie uh, An Innocent Man in Glass House. Dude, America, bro, I mean, I love being an American, but dude, the, the country, the laws are for the criminals, dude. You try to defend yourself against somebody trying to hurt you, you or your family, or one little drinky pool, man, you're in maximum security prison, man. Then you try to ride with your people like these youngsters tell you. No, I say you shouldn't ride with your people, but here I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Don't be a dumbass like me. I used to rock the yard by myself. Because first of all, man, I was dumb as fuck. Second of all, I didn't give a fuck. And third of all, I was high as fuck. And you guys are going to say, hey, OG, I thought you don't believe in taking drugs or drinking. Hey, dude, they had me on psych meds, dude. I was doing such violent, crazy shit to people, dude. I'm going to give you a quick secret. I want you guys to pause the video. Take your thumb, dude. And stick it right here in your tear duct and just push a little bit. Push it a little bit. You're going to get sick to your stomach because you feel how volatile your eyeball is. Dude, I used to take my thumb and stick it in the motherfucker's eye and pull this fucking eyeball out, bro. I didn't give a fuck. Why? Because I was in hell. I thought I was going to meet the devil. I thought my life was over. I said, fuck it. If I'm going to be in hell, I'm going to be the number one demon. Watch this movie called The One. Where he told the people, I'm not in here with you. You're in here with me. Right? So I was a dumbass, but now that I look back on it, you know, now that I'm trying to practice Stoicism, ascend to a higher level, whether you want to say I'm into Buddhism or Zen Buddhism or Confucianism, I'm all about love and giving back to you guys. And the number one mistake I made was walking the yard by myself, and here's why. Everybody in prisons mobbed up, clicked up, grouped up, whatever you want to call it, and I think that's how you know the guards are in cahoots with the warden and Satan, the devil, because, dude, why would you let... A group of Crips walk around together. Why would you let a group of Bloods walk around together? Why would you let a group of Serenios or Nortenos or the rest of Familia or Hells Angels or ABs walk together, dude? Man, when there's numbers, dude, there's problems, dude. So what happens is when you walk in the yard by yourself, you stick out like a sore thumb. Everybody else is clicked up and mobbed up, mobbing the yard and everything. You know what I'm saying? Like a pack of hyenas. And they look at you. Hey, man, who's that motherfucker? Hey, I don't know, man. Hey, Bobby Sue, go over there and check, dude. See what's popping, man. Because he got some nice butt cheeks and he got some titties, man. And we're going to take all the money off his books. You save yourself a lot of problems. So what I'm going to tell you is this, guys. 
not only are the predators and the bandits looking at you, dude, but also, dude, like the motherfucking, uh, what do I, how do I want to call these people, man? I call them the demonic undead, dude. They're looking to take your snow. <coughs> I call them the soul snatchers, man. Their life ain't shit. They lifers, they ain't never going to be shit. They look at you walking alone, man. They're going to make you their bottom boy bitch. Just because, man, even if you're a nice dude, you're not a homosexual. Like, Who is this dude in here by himself? I'm going up in his cheeks every night because nobody's protecting him. So I'm going to give you the cheat code. So if you're a white dude, as soon as you hit the yard, just look and see where you see a bunch of white dudes, like a bunch of white dudes hanging out, and you just kind of stand over here peripherally, man. I don't know if you smoke cigarettes or whatever, but just kind of, you know, be standing around doing your own thing. And when they move, you move, man. If you're a black dude, you want to do the same thing. You just go to see where there's a group of black dudes. But make sure they're not Crips or Bloods. Just make sure they look like some up north dudes or some down south dudes. Because they got some dudes like they ain't banging, but they kind of hang out together because they're from the same area. And then you just kind of hang out like that. You just hang out with them, man. Whenever, when they move, you move. But never, ever, ever walk the yard alone, dude, because you're going to have the problems I had. The only thing was, man, something's wrong with me. I kind of... I ain't going to lie to you, man. I kind of think I like going into battle because I was so frustrated. I was so angry at how my life had turned out. I was so disappointed in myself. And like I said, it was my first time in maximum security prison as an adult. I didn't know that 26 years I was only going to do half. I thought I was going to do the whole thing. So at 29, that's said 29 plus 26. Man, I'm going to be like 60-something years old. And back when you're 29, dude, when you're looking ahead 26 years, man, 29, 39, 49, oh, I would have been like, uh, I'd have been like 55 years old. But back when you're 29, man, that, that seems like an eternity. So if you like this tip that I gave you, want more insightful uh, videos, dude, the more tips like this to help you guys not just understand maximum security prison, but how to stay the fuck out of there. Then thumbs up the video, man, and leave a comment, man. Let me know what you think about the topic, man. Because I'm trying to give you guys some, some tips that will help you not to have to experience savage violence. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification all bell because I'm trying to get up to 100,000 subs by the end of this year. Because, dude, I really want to reach a lot of youngsters, man. I just see living back east now. I see, wow. The, the, the depredation of the youngsters, dude, the de-evolution. The youngsters now don't give a fuck about nobody, fuck about shit. I remember when I was a youngster, there's always been bad youngsters, even back in biblical times or Quran times, back in the day. Even if you read the Habibak Vida, the Bhagavad Vida, the Indian Vidas. But now, when I was a youngster, even though there's some bad youngsters, if an old lady would come out, like a, a, a grandmother type lady or an old dude, hey, y'all cut that out. Get out of here with that. Okay, sorry about that, sir. They would have respect for that. Man, youngsters now, that you guys see on YouTube, youngsters going around socking grand dudes, knocking them out, socking grandmothers, knocking them out, socking ladies. They don't give a fuck, dude. So I'm just saying, man, it's, it's really sad because it's a reflection <coughs> of the broken households and the decline of the nuclear family. So we all got to do our part, guys. I'm on YouTube. What is your part, man? Thumbs up the video, man. Leave a comment. Let me know how you feel about the topic. And most importantly, subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification all bell because I don't know when I'm going to be doing another video. And share the video. So until next time, hold yourself back. Out.